The Insider. สวัสดีครับ Welcome to The Insider. We are now at Amnoi Sin School. Among all the government ministries in Thailand, the Ministry of Education has received the biggest budget, and this has been so for many years. However, experts on countries' social and economic developments have all agreed that education in Thailand is an area that needs the most reform. What we need to do to make sustainable improvement to education in Thailand. Today we have a special guest who is in the right position to answer our question, Dr. Thiragia j a r a n s e t h a s i n the Deputy Education Minister. สวัสดีครับ Dr. Thiragia t h a s i n So thank you very much for joining the Insider, and of course, welcome back to school. I think we both have left school for quite some times already. What is our educational st standard like now compared to? Before, you cannot really compare because what our previous generations studied or learned would be very different from what we are now doing. Uh, so, and also, if you look at any topic, the previous generations, the older generations, we always complain that the younger generations are not doing well. They are doing so bad, badly that. Uh, the previous generations always think they're doing better. So when you talk about the standards of education, you need to ask: compared to what? Compared to our neighboring countries? Maybe. Compared to the world standards? Uh -huh. So if you take ASEAN countries, we are not doing too bad. Well, I heard about the ranking. Yes. What is Thailand educational ranking at the moment? Yes. In the world, you again there's. Different agencies. Some are quite respectable, like PISA, which is done by OECD uh -huh. and TIMS. So they assess some. You have to take it with a pinch of salt. That means, you know, they they are not so accurate. But com compared with our ASEAN neighboring countries, we are behind Singapore, which unfortunately Singapore is the top of the world. So we're in the league. Together with the top of the world, but we in ASEAN country we we are behind Vietnam. Uh -huh. uh, we ranked the third in the last uh, PISA uh, assessment. Mm -hmm. And but overall, there is a lot to be desired. We still have a long way to go. Uh, but if you ask me, uh, the quality of or the standards of Thai education, uh, I would say. Probably average, given the risk, it's not so efficient. Put it this way: in terms of we spend a lot of money, uh, the budget, but we don't seem to get the outcomes or or results that we expect. Uh, but having spent a lot of money, the standards are not too bad. Well, but much has been said about mm. the quality of the. Um, of the Thai educational yes. institution. Yes. So, would you be able to, yes. you know, discuss on this yes. matter? Now, Thailand education. There, there are many ways to assess education. If you talk about accessibility, we are now have we have made a long progress, a long way, uh, because accessibility now is uh, quite universal. You talk about quality, as I said. Let's come back to this later. Equity. We have some problems with equity. That means the results and the outcomes in certain areas are not as good as those of others. And then we have the efficiency problems. That shows that the system is not efficient in the sense that it's not run properly. Now, coming back to the quality issues, then you need standards to measure yourselves against. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in general, the international agencies would rate us on. Mathematics, science, and reading. So, if you take these three, uh, again, not so good, but not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. What about English? This is the major complaint. You know, a couple months ago there was an IMB rating, yes, and about our country's competitiveness, and the 
education rating has gone down a little bit and you look at the breakdown in details it's to do with the ability to communicate in English so this, there's an urgent need to upgrade our English as a nation uh, there are various reasons I don't need to spell out all the reasons but English is for our country is actually holding our education system back governments emphasize on the um, STI Science, this, technology, yeah, yes. and innovation. Yes. Are all these areas being given focus at we, the moment? We can dream and we have desires to have innovations or innovate. But you have to understand that innovation actually comes at the top mm -hmm. of learning. So if our basic or fundamental subjects like science and math and English are not good, say so take what we call Bloom Taxonomy of Learning before you can innovate, which is at the top of the ladder. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to recall the subjects. Second step, understand. Third, apply, then analyze, and then evaluate before you can innovate or create. Mm -hmm. So we cannot jump to the top mm -hmm. without proper foundation. And if you look at the scores of science and maths nationally, okay, at high school level, we are still scoring in the range of between 20 and 30 percent in major subjects. Mm. So I think we need to come back to the most fundamental things first. Otherwise, innovation would be just purely minor adaptation, minor changes, or you know, adjustment, or some invention that doesn't bring in, if you like, money or commercialization. So innovation is a, a widely used word uh, but it just remains words. The reason that I am asking this question mm -hmm. because we are now living in a very competitive world. Yes. But therefore, education is yes. the key That's for right. the basic foundation. If we in Thailand cannot, you know, fulfill those requirements mm -hmm. yeah. in order for us to become well, you know, competitive, should we collaborate with our foreign country? Yes. Uh, luckily, in this government, for instance, in in the field of education, I have had a lot of help. Oh, that's great. Uh, particularly from the British government, Cambridge University, Cambridge Assessment, you know, basically has helped us tremendously with all the strategies. Uh, and our government is, I think, is doing the right thing. For instance, we are upgrading our English nationwide. Mm -hmm. We are trying to prepare our kids for good foundations. Then, what is the education ministry is doing in order to, okay. um, you know, to tackle that problem? Okay. Number one, I think in education, if you try to do too much structural reforms, we do some work. Those are that can present as obstacles. The prime minister, the minister, and the ministry as a whole have tried to sort that out by adjusting some structural change. In, in terms of the system. But in education, re education reform, the unique thing is, if you don't reform the teaching and learning, what is happening in the classroom, you're not going to be successful. You can do all sorts of, you know, raising teacher salary, adjusting all the bureaucratic system, but unless you do something uh, for the teaching and learning, you, you do not succeed how the government can help the teachers. Again, you have to ask what we are now seeing, the teachers' qualities. People keep complaining. When you look at the history, they haven't been helped and there have been no focus on what we should be doing. Take, for instance, the quality of uh, English teachers. I'm not, okay. put it this way, teachers who teach English. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you look at this, when we look back from King Rama V, Okay, over a hundred years ago. Our policy here is no different from His Majesty King Rama V. He then wanted to uh, internationalize our countries. His Majesty King Rama V brought in a lot of foreigners. Now, again, we are no different. We need help from abroad, as you asked me earlier. Yes. So take teachers who teach English. There are 40,000 mm -hmm. teachers who teach English. They have been neglected. Now you can know their quality. We test their academic content, how much they know about English. 
and you'll be surprised that at the top level, out of 40,000, there are only eight teachers who can be considered as fluent as the native speakers. A majority, but now we have the figure, majority now are at what we call the most basic A1 or A2. So you really need to think what we're going to do with this. So we have a lot of initi initiatives to upgrade their standards very quickly. Number one, we need to build the standards. We have to have yardsticks or measures that we're going to move towards. And then we have, you may have heard of boot camp, uh, which, the, which we actually try for six weeks, yes. intensive. Now I'm pleased to say that from that, we now have established 18 regional boot camps mm -hmm. uh, around the country, adopting and also adapting some of what we have learned. So in two years, we are going to train uh, in a new way, 15,000 teachers who will be very capable of teaching English. Now, with the efficient use of resources, because I've, I've visited countries like South Korea, I asked them, they, they took 10 years to upgrade their teachers of English. And they told me that they spent phenomenal budget on oh. this. We spend a fraction, but we hope we get the strategy right. And we transform also the textbooks and the number of hours of teaching English. From in the past, for primary one, two, three that you, you see there, our students in the past used to learn one hour of English per week. Yes, somebody, I still can uh, somebody has calculated, a foreigner has calculated it would take us 300 years if we go at that pace. To have a good command? Yes, to have a good command. So I was teasing them that in fact we believe in reincarnation. So we can come back and do it. No, what I'm saying is we haven't spent enough time. And out of those, mm. now the government increased it to 504%, five folds increase. And then we have to prepare the resources. For instance, the vocabulary. Uh, you know, we, it makes us compulsory 1,000 words per year. Mm -hmm. uh, the way we teach functional English. Mm. You know, a lot of Thais have learned English over years. Yes. But they're not able to communicate. Yes, they cannot I use can it. So their English is not functional. So we are also changing this. So a number of measures and direction. Be, c be careful that in, in any reform you often get carried away and caught up in a lot of directives. Somebody will come and say do this, do that. So I have to stay very focused what direction we are heading towards. Winston, you mentioned the teacher's training. That's the direction we are going. Well, when it's come to the issue of teacher, yes. I think people always ask you know, what we can um, get from the teacher. Yeah. But um, maybe another question need to be asked as well. Yes. What can the government can give the teacher? So I have to say that we have neglected our teachers for too long. And I'm pleased to say that this government actually has paid serious attention That's to upgrading great. the methodology, the teaching ability of our teachers, and also the welfare of the teachers. That's very important. Very important. And you may not be aware that this is the first government that actually repairs all the houses of oh. the teachers in the rural areas, all the houses. Uh, some of the houses are not habitable, they're not livable. And in the remote areas. In remote areas, so you need to look at the welfare yes. of the teachers. So that retention is there, so that we don't have problems with recruitment. And also then the uh, teaching ability uh, take English as an example, okay? Because of this government's initiatives, we have intensively trained uh, teachers of English in what we call boot camp style for six weeks, very intensively. And from that uh, camp, we actually derive some knowledge and actually now can spread the boot camps to 18 regional centers that will adopt and adapt this model. So in two years, we can then train 
15,000 teachers in a new way with a fraction of the cost of that is used in countries like South Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, South Korea told me that they have spent phenomenally to upgrade their teachers of English uh, and it has taken them 10 years. Still, they now feel confident, although they're not wholly satisfied. Mm -hmm. But our government, I think we have done a lot. Increasing the number of hours of English teaching. You look at these kids, primary one, two, three. Before this government, they only learn English one hour per week. And now we have increased to five hours per week. Uh, with all the details, the content that to be taught in those five hours. Vocabulary, functional English, you, we all know that Thai have studied English for over 10 years but cannot communicate, reading and so on. Well, it seems to me that this government is now making a big change in the, uh, the country's education. Yes. I can say that uh, this is a big comprehensive education reform of the country. What is the reform, the education reform in Thailand? Have you noticed when the government first came in, Yes. there were a lot of complaints about education. Nowadays, I think you hear some, but not as much. I believe that we are in the right direction. People okay. ask for. Yeah. Yeah, people when they, they get, but you have to understand in education reform, it takes years. Yes. Uh, what we do now, we are sowing seeds. Uh, the seeds will bear fruits later on, much later. It may take five to ten years. We can have quick improvement, we cannot have quick fix. Uh, so we need to think about number one, the big reform comprehensively. That includes structural reform, uh, that includes the blueprint, the plan for five, ten, twenty, twenty years. But at the same time we need to prioritize what we have to do. To, for instance, to, to meet the goals of innovations and Thailand 4.0, we need to at least identify three key areas. STEM education, uh, English, and in, in fact these are the two. And also the, the, the teachers training. We, teachers training by that I mean you've got to fix a problem before it starts. You, know, you have to fix the teachers before they become teachers, that means in their training colleges. So this is kind of unpublicized mm -hmm. area, but we are also doing that. And it's now in our blueprint for the next governments to come, and, and, and basically they can run with it. Uh, but at the moment we are doing what are the most necessary things to take our country forward. Okay, I got one question, yes. simple one. Yes. What is the future of Thailand education? I believe it's getting better, really, uh, because number one, people are concerned and people are also interested, and both in the government and in the private sectors and everybody now join hands. And we, we are doing something, and we are not just shouting, complaining. So what we are doing now will definitely bear fruits. So we cannot get worse, okay? Because I believe we are doing it right. Uh, so you've asked me simple question, simple answer, we are getting better. But how much better remains to be seen? Uh, and I think uh, we, we have hope. Education seems to be a key area of the um, comprehensive reform of this government. Would you mind sharing with me what policy that this government you know, place particular importance on, such so as any, anything new, any legislation been made yes. for education. You look at this, in a couple of months, you're going to have a brand new constitution. Oh, okay. yes. This constitution is unique, particularly for education reform, in at least from what I can see in three aspects, or four. Number one, it makes it compulsory uh, for 12 years, and in fact the Prime Minister now has issued his order to make it extended to 15 years, compulsory education from preschool right to the end of secondary school. Ah. That means the, now, the, the compulsory education is very comprehensive. 
right from uh, preschool. I think this is the right direction because research has shown it again and again. The more you re invest in the younger ones, the better the yields you get. Okay, you get a return per investment much much better than when you invest in uh, the older kids. So this is one aspect. Number two. The constitution requires a setup of a, a, a committee for education reform, and not only that, it requires a law, a new law, to be passed to for education reform strategies. So they get a group of experts in education around the country. Then together, we have to enact a law to. Basically, stipulate, specify the strategies for reform, and lastly, uh, is going to have a new education act. The education act that we are now using is back to 2000, and I think, to be honest, people would agree that it, this present act hasn't produced the results we hoped when the act was there into the year 2000. So the new constitution says there must be a new education act. So this, which this is a one of the very few areas that the constitution stipulates that the government must do, and it has to be completed in two years. Well, that is very crucial for yeah. for our um, education. Oh, well, thank you very much, Dr. t i r u k i a t I am very pleased to have the opportunity to talk with you. It has been very enjoyable conversation, and once again, uh, thank you very much for being with the Insider this week. So You're most welcome. Thank you. s o thank you. Policymakers all agree that education is the silver bullet for a country's success. And gathering from what the Deputy Education Minister has said, Thailand has finally embarked on substantive reforms to its education system. It will take years, as it has in many countries, but the process has started, and we really look forward to the result of this change. Well, thank you for watching the Insider, and please stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you once again. สวัสดีครับ I would consider the education within Thailand is definitely developing for the better. I think, with the influence of Singapore, with Europe and America, with the influx of, I think, with English teachers and the impressions they're having on Thai teachers, it's definitely enhancing the education within Thailand. And I think the influence that we're having as a school, as many other private schools and other developing schools, in terms of thinking and developing the cognitive awareness for the children, I think. The educational um, development of Thailand is on the rise. Very fun, and I love it.